大家好，我是国际肝病的小编佳墨。九月一号到四号，全球肝癌领域学术盛典，第十六届国际肝癌协会年会 （LCA） 正在西班牙马德里召开。来自世界各地的肝癌专家集合在一起，重新开启线下关于肝癌基础与临床研究与技术的学术碰撞。大会共收录了五十多个国家、八百多位学者的最新研究成果。更多精彩的大会内容，请点击视频右下角头像进行关注。So my name is Bruno Sangro. I'm a hepatologist. I work in the University of Navarra in Pamplona, Spain. I've been dedicated to the treatment of liver cancer for very many years. Yes, these two checkpoint molecules act at different stages in the immune response against cancer, while. PD-1 acts preferentially in the late stages when the T lymphocytes have reached the tumor site. CTLA-4 acts both in priming the immune system and starting the immune response, but also in uh, um, counteracting the effects of uh, the immune response at the local site through what we call regulatory T cells that constitutively express CTLA-4. Uh, the important point is that some tumors, HC among them, have proven to be sensitive to CTLA-4 inhibition. We know this from our earliest um, trial with tremolibumab monotherapy and from other studies that have included tremolibumab alone, which has a, a, a response rate of about 15%, which is similar to PD-1. The important thing is that now, with the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab, and tremolimumab plus duvalumab, we know that these, the action of these two checkpoint inhibitors may add one on another, may even be synergistic, and the combinations work better than monotherapies. That's what we need for clinical use. So, uh, as of today, what we know is that the two clinical trials that have tested uh, targeted therapies, tyrosine kinase inhibitors with uh, PD-1 or PD-L1 inhibitors, have failed to show positive results, both COSMIC-312 and LIPO-2. We don't know the, the details of the latest. We only have a press release, but FAD failed to show an advantage in, in the primary endpoints, particularly an advantage in survival. And uh, uh, this peaks against the, 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 these two compounds having an additive, uh, let alone a synergistic effect. So I think, as of today, combinations should be uh, considered with uh, the purely VEGF inhibitor bevacizumab or with the CTLA-4 inhibitor tremolimumab. And we are waiting for the results of the combination of ipilimumab plus nivolumab. Uh, when you release the brakes of the immune system using checkpoint inhibitors, you uh, may have uh, adverse events in form of inflammation in any organ in, in, the, in the human body. Uh, when you do dual blockade with two uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, then the chances of having this kind of immune-mediated adverse events are higher. But the type of events is similar. It's basically uh, uh, toxicity, inflammatory toxicity to the skin, to the endocrine organs, the thyroid, sometimes the adrenal gland, the liver, hepatitis, and the uh, gastrointestinal syst uh, uh, system with uh, colitis. More rarely, pneumonitis and other really dreadful complications such as myocarditis and others. Altogether, the thing is that if you are aware of the possibility of these immune adverse events and you closely monitor the patients, you can avoid them being high grade, you can treat them correctly, and the patient may benefit from the treatment. The information we have today comes from the Himalaya trial where uh, patients received either serafinib as a control 
durvalumab, an anti pilia one uh, agent, monotherapy, and the combination of durvalumab or plus one single priming early dose of tremelimumab. The, uh, there was an advantage of uh, this regimen called STRIDE, combination of CTLA-4 and uh, PD-1 inhibition versus uh, serafinib. And duvalumab was only non-inferior. This means that the combination is more active. So since the side effects, the toxicity effects are manageable, are not high frequency and are easily manageable, I, I, I rarely see a, a patient that would benefit more from monotherapy than from combination. There are two things that we are desperately uh, searching for. One is um, biomarkers that could allow us to identify up from those patients who do not benefit, more than those patients who benefit, those patients who do not benefit from immunotherapy. Because for those patients, we do have active drugs, which are TKI inhibitors, and it would be better to start patients on these drugs as early as possible. So biomarkers is one thing. The other thing is expanding the possibilities of uh, uh, explo ex exploiting an immune response by other technologies. And we can think about adoptive T-cell therapy. We can think about uh, CAR T-cell therapy uh, or TCR engineered T-cell therapy, but also combinations with drugs that provide uh, epigenetic changes that may make the um, tumors more antigenic more prone for developing an immune response.